For the last month, I've been following Weight Watchers as the first of my 12 monthly experiments that I'm going to be doing in 2020 to see which of these popular diets actually works, particularly for me, a £300 plus man who's tried loads of stuff, tried loads of stuff over the years, nothing's ever really stuck, I've never really lost any weight, in fact I've gradually been gaining weight for years and I wanted to see, right, for people like me, what are the diets that might work? So I'm going to do a different one every month throughout the year. If that interests you, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn notifications on, like the video to tell me you're excited for the rest of the series. But this is part one. This is Weight Watchers, which I followed throughout January. So just to give you a little bit of background on Weight Watchers and how it works, especially if you've used Weight Watchers in the past, like I have, it has changed quite a lot. Um, last time I used Weight Watchers was probably five or six years ago and at the time you were just given a points amount that you could use each day. You got a few extra points that you could use throughout the week as well. And then every single food that existed was also given a points value. Some of those values were zero, but you pretty much had to track everything. And as long as your points that you ate each day were less than the points that you were allowed to use, you were, you were following the plan. It's, it's as easy as that. It's about as simple as these things come. But having said that, it's kind have been further simplified once you get past an initial bit of extra complication because now there are three separate versions of Weight Watchers and they're color coded. When you first sign up for it, and full disclosure, I did all this online and through the app. The idea of going to meetings does not appeal to me at all, but I'm assuming the process is very similar if you go to meetings. But when you first sign up, it gives you a little questionnaire to find out what your current eating habits are. And based on your answers to those questions, it then recommends which of the three plans you then follow. For me, it recommended the blue plan and what the blue plan offers is around 200 zero points foods with a slightly lower daily points total on some of the other plans you might have fewer foods that are classed as zero points but you might get slightly more points in general so it really depends on how restrictive you want to be and how much you're into tracking stuff for me i've kind of felt like if a food was healthy i didn't really want to have to go through tracking it and weighing it and going for all that kind of nonsense so for me the one with the most zero points food made sense because the zero point stuff was things like your fruits vegetables lean meats that kind of thing eggs the stuff that you would expect expect to be healthy was zero points and I, I kind of didn't even bother putting that into the app and saved the points for the stuff that I knew had a points value that I could then track that separately. So I, the, the plan for me was to base my diet as much as I could around the zero point stuff and use the points to then fill in the gaps and treat myself to stop myself going insane. Because I am as heavy as I am, uh, I was given a very large points allowance as well. So I got 52 points per day, plus these 200 zero point foods, plus another 50 points a week, weekly points allowance, which you can use throughout the week. So if you have a day for me with my 52 point budget, if I had a day where I ate 60 points worth of food, those extra eight points just come out of my weekly allowance. So at the end of the week, as long as I've not eaten more than the sum of all of my daily points, plus my weekly points added on, plus any extra points I've earned through exercise, something called fit points, as long as my total food expenditure on points was less than that big total of things that I was allowed, then I was following the plan and it would be successful. So it seemed to make sense to me. I liked the fact that I could be very flexible with it. I liked the fact that it was tracking over the week rather than per day. So if I wanted to have a Chinese takeaway on a Sunday evening um, and use 80 points, that's fine if I've saved up my weekly points throughout the week rather than, oh, that's ruined that day. Psychologically for me, I felt that that was going to work a little bit better. So I went into this month feeling pretty positive about everything but my weight, because I, uh, I obviously had to weigh myself a day or two before we started, and it wasn't pretty. Yikes. That's, uh, that's a new record by by quite some way. To give you some context for that, I've been sort of sporadically tracking my weight in my fitness pal for about the last seven years. And this graph that you're looking at is what my weight has done in that time. I, I'd hit a new high, which isn't as good as it sounds. 
the start of this plan could not come soon enough. So first morning of what I'm referring to as the Weight Watchers experience, and I've realized I've got no healthy food in the house. Um, it's New Year's Day, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning. We had party food last night. We haven't really done a big shop since well before Christmas. There's nothing, there's, I can't even have like a healthy bowl of cereal. I don't even know if that is healthy. Looking at the app, it might not be. I need to relearn everything I thought I knew about food. So I am at Tesco. I've had a look on the app and I've picked out what I think looks like a reasonably healthy meal. The only problem is, because it's a Weight Watchers recipe, it involves some elements that are Weight Watchers branded things. And I'm thinking 11 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day in a middle-class town where there's lots of fat housewives who've all started their diets today, chances are I'm gonna be at the end of the fat housewife line. I'm not an efficient enough fat housewife to get in there and get the food that I need. I need Weight Watchers bread, I need Weight Watchers cheese. This is gonna be a challenge. unexpected outcome number one is that they they hardly had any health stuff in there I don't know if there's some psychological thing that Tesco are aware of that means ah, 1st of January is on a Wednesday people will start their diets next Monday which I guess might be the case but there was no Weight Watchers bread it wasn't it was all gone there was none there was no Weight Watchers cheese this is the sort of stuff you'd expect to be in there at this time of year I got vague equivalents I hope it doesn't wreck the meal that I've picked I will run it all through the app before eating it what I did find though is there was loads of the Christmas food was all on offer so like the cheese board that I spent six or seven quid on two weeks ago is now one pound seventy five it would have been so easy to buy loads of the food that I would like to be eating much cheaper than normal I'm doing this at the wrong time of the year I'm playing into the marketing men's dreams and on top of that I've also bought one of every Weight Watchers ready meal that they had in there this would absolutely not be a sustainable way to do this diet they're two pound eighty each for one person's one meal each one's somewhere between eight and ten points somewhere around sort of 350 to 450 calories I suspect that's not gonna be enough food to fill me so we are going to be better off cooking our own stuff, but until the cookbook comes, which it hasn't yet, I'm kind of relying on picking stuff out of the app, which is a little bit clunky to navigate. So we'll try the ready meals in the meantime and, and see how we get on with those. Well, that as a breakfast is an unmitigated disaster. If anyone ever tries to tell you, you can fry eggs in spray oil. That person is a liar. They're not to be trusted. Don't associate with them anymore disaster and i think disaster was kind of the theme of these first few days as i mentioned there we were pretty much living off of weight watchers ready meals until the cookbook arrived and i'll level with you they ain't very nice and they're not very filling they're tiny portions they're obviously made for people who were probably on a much lower points target than I was so they were coming in at somewhere like six to eight points per meal which when you've got a daily budget of 52 points I guess to be satisfied I probably should have been eating five or six of those over the course of the day when in reality I was having a cup, one or two one at lunch one at dinner time plus my breakfast so I wasn't having a very good time for the first few days but then this happened. First big challenge of this so far, we are in Nottingham and a trip to Nottingham traditionally includes a trip to Reds for some barbecue food. Now, with Weight Watchers, you do get the uh, weekly points used on top of your daily points, of which I have touched none throughout this process so far. So theoretically, I can eat the rest of today's points and more than that again. So you might be able to do it. I haven't worked it out yet. I'm going to work it out on the tram back to see if it's possible. But fingers crossed, there's still some barbecue food in my future. Albeit, I might have to be a little bit more sensible than usual in my menu choices. I wasn't very sensible in my menu choices. This is what I ate. Doesn't it look fantastic? It was delicious. And all of a sudden, it was like I'd seen the light. It's fine for me to eat in a really miserable, restricted way for most of the week. If I can reward myself like this on a Saturday, Saturday treats were immediately a new part of the plan because Saturday morning was my weigh-in time. So my theory was weigh-in on a Saturday morning 
and then <laughs> blow a whole load of my weekly points Saturday afternoon and then have a week to earn it all back again by following the plan. Yes, you could probably argue it would make sense to have the reward at the end of the week, but that's not how my mind works. I wanted the reward first and then I'll earn it afterwards, knowing that I won't get the next one unless I did. So I needed to come up with a plan to make that work. Well, after the first five days of kind of struggling through using the app, it's actually not been too bad, but it has been a little bit hit and miss. We finally have the cookbook that I ordered from the Weight Watchers website, because this isn't available on Amazon anyway. This is a new style Weight Watchers cookbook ordered this a week ago it is now here so the plan for the afternoon now it's Sunday afternoon is using this book for inspiration plan a meal plan for the week and then do a Tesco food order to come tomorrow with the food for that meal plan so I don't have to keep going back and forth to the shops and getting tempted and so that we don't get tempted to order takeaways because there's no food in the house so that cookbook super important it was also quite expensive it was about 20 quid that cookbook well that was a big job that's probably taking me the best part of two hours to put together a meal plan it looks a little bit like this so porridge for breakfast most days apart from weekend where we get egg well or in fact that's egg and sausage rather than egg and bacon so we didn't like bacon banalians really pretty basic sandwich twiglets fruit for lunch a variety of different dinners and then bits to snack on as you can see based on those meals I have loads of points spare to snack on every day so there'll be that stuff plus stuff where I cheat a little bit the one thing I've found and is always the case with diets like this though that fairly basic simple looking meal plan because we haven't really done much in the way of home cooking from the supermarket for months because we were doing gusto for so long we don't have a lot of store cupboard stuff so having to buy like a bottle of olive oil um uh, all the different herbs and things that we need we literally had to buy everything that we're going to be eating and it's cost 120 pounds just for what me and anna are going to eat this week that doesn't include andy that doesn't include the girls so just for me and anna to eat a weight watchers menu between the two of us for a week is costing us 60 pounds each this week plus any extras that we have to top up through the week. I've not got a week's worth of bananas on this shop, for example. I've not got a week's worth of milk. So there's going to be bits that we have to top up throughout the week, plus obviously the Weight Watchers subscription itself, plus the cookbook. I'm sure future Kev will do all the maths, but this is not a cheap diet to follow. That did get better. I know I'm, I'm jumping ahead in the story a little bit, but that was the only week we spent crazy money. We were back down roughly to our normal weekly shopping spend from then on because we got all of the extra store cupboard stuff that we needed. I think we were probably a unique situation because we hadn't done proper home cooking from scratch for so long because we'd been on the Gusto subscriptions for like three or four months. So we just, really, like I said in the, in the clip there, we just really didn't have anything. So I think that was a little bit extreme i think any normal person who does cook normally going into this wouldn't have to spend quite so much money so all i've said there it's it's not a cheap thing to follow i actually think on the whole it's not too bad 20 quid for the cookbook 13.99 for the month and then let's say a normal person would maybe have to spend an extra 20 quid at the start of the plan just to get a few extra bits in but if you're looking at an upfront cost of 40 or 50 quid and then less than 20 pounds a month if it works, that seems reasonable to me. It's much cheaper than going to the gym or, you know, it's like having Netflix and Amazon Prime, sort of. But of course, the key to that is if it works. So let's, let's see if it's working. First weigh in this morning, I am down 6.6 .6 pounds. You can be absolutely sure I'm counting the 0.6 as well because I can round that up and say I've lost half a stone in the first week on Weight Watchers. They've stolen a point from me as well. I'm now down to just 50 points a day, but so far, so good. It seems pretty easy so far. I'll tell you what, this Weight Watchers thing is gonna take a lot of beating because things I've eaten in the last week whilst doing Weight Watchers, I've had a kebab, I've had a Domino's pizza, I had a Veggie Supreme a small pizza, which is like, I think it was 15 points. We've just had a Subway where I got a six inch turkey and ham sub with cheese and mayo, which is 10 points. What else have I had that you wouldn't associate with diets? I've had crisps, I've had a Twix, I've had Christmas cake, and I've still lost half a stone this week. You have half 
You have double the amount I have. Yeah, because I'm much heavier than you. Weight Watchers is going well so far. Okay, I know what you're thinking. Kev, you just showed us you made a meal plan for the week and that meal plan didn't include kebabs and pizzas and subways. You are right, but this was one of the great things about the flexibility that Weight Watchers gave me. You would have seen on the plan that I had my 20 or so points spare every day. Sometimes I used them, sometimes I didn't. And sometimes I got a super strong craving for something that in the past could have derailed me off the diet completely. But now I had a way to incorporate it. So if I got a craving for pizza, which I did, rather than ordering a large pepperoni passion and ruining it, I ordered, I, I did some research. I found out, right, is there a way to get myself a pizza, get my pizza hit while staying within the points amount? And it turns out that a small veggie supreme from Domino's, as long as you have the light cheese and the thin base, it's like 15 points. It fitted into my daily snacks. I didn't have it as a snack. I had it, for, had it for dinner one day. I'm not a complete monster. But it took my mind off pizza. I'd been thinking about pizza for like three days. I had some pizza it took that craving away. Same with the kebab when I had that. I just had a small kebab without any naan or wrapper, just the kebab meat. Yes, the worst bit. Kebab meat, bit of salad, bit of chili sauce. It's not perfect, it was like 22 points, but I had the points to use. I used them, wasn't obsessing about kebabs anymore, just stayed on the plan and did all that in a week that I lost seven pounds which is mad. I got so excited about my weigh-in yesterday morning. It's Sunday night at the end of week two at the moment that I just forgot to record it. And um, because, I don't know if you can see on there, um, I lost another 5.6 pounds this week. When you add that to the 6.6 .6 pounds from the week before, total weight loss in the first two weeks of doing this, 12 stone, two pounds. And that is, that. firstly, that's awesome. That's nearly a stone gone in two weeks if I can keep that pace up, which I know is really unlikely, but that makes a significant, it takes a significant chunk off of the target. In my head, I'd like to be below 20 stone for Disney, which is a tall order because as of now, I'm 22 stone, 13 points. So basically 23 stone. So losing three stone by the end of May is doable, but only if, only if everything goes to the plan. But that would be the dream to be under 20 stone before we go there. But I think I said something similar this time last year. So at the moment, I'm just really happy. 12 pounds off in two weeks. I'll take that any fortnight for the rest of my life, I'm sure. Now, I do know it's pretty unlikely I'll ever have a fortnight like that again unless I fall off the wagon completely and restart from a from a period of being a glutton again because a lot of that is going to be water weight. A lot of that is just the initial shock of going from eating like a monster to eating relatively healthily, but all the same, kicking things off with a £12 weight loss. That was better than I, that was better than I could have hoped for, I think. Just wanted to keep the ball rolling from there. But of course, sometimes life likes to just throw a spanner in the works. We're out for Lucy's birthday brunch. Um, I've just had a 36 point breakfast. We haven't even had birthday cake yet. Today is one of those days where I'm going to be using my weekly points. This was the one time throughout the entire month I ate first and then looked up the points later. It was only a, like a cooked breakfast, but yeah, having uh, scrambled eggs with no be no butter or fat, with some bacon medallions or low-fat sausages at home, it's a very different proposition to going out to a restaurant and having the works and all of the all of the bacon and the sausage and the black pudding and the fried eggs and the fried bread and the, it was a bad idea. But it did fit into my weekly points allowance. I didn't end up having any birthday cake later that day. We got birthday cupcakes and then Lucy just took them back to her mum's with her. So I didn't eat any birthday cake. So actually, although that was a moment of disaster that again is another thing that could easily have derailed me in the past because there was a way for me to fit it within the system and it didn't ruin that day or that week, I just took it in my stride and carried on. This, this, I genuinely think that is the big strength of Weight Watchers, the fact that you have the weekly points allowance and there are ways to shoehorn in crazily unhealthy meals or days but still make it work overall. It's like it kind of by stealth is tricking you into eating super clean and super healthy for set like 70-80% of the time. The other 20% of the time you can fall into your old habits, but it doesn't matter because overall you're doing okay. And I, I think a lot of the other diets that I've started to research for this project over the course of the year don't have that level of flexibility. And that 
I think might cause me a problem when the time comes. This is a big, big thing about Weight Watchers. Weighed in again this morning, forgot to mention it again. Um, lost another three and a half pounds, so that's like 16. I'll put it on screen exactly how much it is and just celebrate with the Frank and Benny's, which is yet another thing that I wouldn't be able to eat on a normal diet. If I lose weight again this week, I really am becoming a huge Weight Watchers convert. That man is a happy man. He is eating all of his favourite foods, not all of the time, but when he fancies them, within moderation. I, that is a man who has never understood the word moderation before, and he's learning what it means. And he's still losing weight. What a happy, what a happy man. Well, it is the 31st of January, officially my last day on Weight Watchers. I won't have my final weigh-in until tomorrow morning when I find out how much I've lost in total. But got to say, Weight Watchers has been so easy to follow. Thinking back through some of the things that I've eaten over the last month, I've had McDonald's breakfasts more than once. Um, I've had a couple of Domino's pizzas. Um, we've been out for barbecue food. We've had fish and chips. We've had... I've had Christmas cake, I've had chocolate, I've had, I don't think I've had any ice cream. I've had a pie, I ate a pie on a diet. And yes, that sounds like, Kev, you haven't really changed your diet at all there. But I have, because doing managing the points each day means I've allowed myself the things that I enjoy and that I would normally cheat on a diet with and it would derail me, but found the points amount. I have tracked everything I've eaten on that Weight Watchers app. The app is brilliant. I've tracked absolutely everything. And if I've had a day where I've had fish and chips, I've known not to snack later because I've maxed out on my points. Or if I've had a couple of days where I've been quite heavy on my points usage, I can drop back for the next couple of days. But over the course of the month, not only have I tracked everything, I have been, although there's been some days when I've been over my points amount, Every single week, there have been points left over because any time you don't use all of your points in a day, they go into your weekly allowance. You start the week with a weekly allowance anyway, and when you go over, it comes out of that weekly allowance. But I have finished all four weeks of this with points to spare in my weekly balance. So even with all that awesome stuff, there's been lots of healthy food. There's been lots of fruit and vegetables and rice cakes. I've eaten so many snacker jacks, you wouldn't believe. And... I think it's been the easiest month of dieting that I've ever done. So the next month is Slimming World and that is going to have a lot to live up to because I've tried Slimming World in the past and didn't enjoy it. That being said, I've also tried Weight Watchers in the past and didn't enjoy it. So I think a lot comes down to the mindset that I go into it with. I went into this knowing failure wasn't an option because I was making this video. So because of that, I've lost weight. Don't know how much yet, but I definitely have. T-shirts even feel a little bit looser. So I would highly recommend Weight Watchers to the point where I'm, I have been quite close to abandoning Slimming World for the next one for just carrying on with Weight Watchers because it's gone so well. But then at the back of my mind, I've, I wonder if it would, would have gone as well if I wasn't making the video. So perhaps what I need for my motivation is to be making the videos because then failure is not an option. So we move on to Slimming World next month. I will miss Weight Watchers and I have a feeling when I have some of the months that are less food intake focus like a, there's going to be a month where i'm doing a month of two liters of water a day for example and um, which is deliberately tied into when we go to disneyland i think probably that month in the background i'll be tracking weight watchers tracking on weight watchers again because i think it's it's been really effective for me in just being more aware of what i'm eating it's cut snacking down i'm eating healthier foods and i'm still getting to eat the stuff i enjoy as well and i've lost weight so can't really argue with any of that. That is a result. Actually, Kev, it's not quite a result until you give the final result. I can't believe I did all that and didn't mention the final weight loss, which was another 2.6 pounds, bringing my total weight loss throughout that month on Weight Watchers to 18 pounds exactly. Four, it's one stone, four pounds for those of you who are in the UK. If, it, if you want it in kilograms, Google it. Kilograms are stupid. But yeah, 18 pounds gone in a month. That I would have taken that at the start of the month. To use one of my football manager cliches, I absolutely would have taken that if it was offered to me before we kicked off. So the last thing I need to do, as promised in the intro video to this series, is I am going to be producing a league table over the course of the year, ranking all of these different diets on the basis of result, 
cost and how easy they were to follow. I'm going to rank, I'm going to score each one out of five on those, add up the totals, do a little league table. Obviously today it's just going to be Weight Watchers is going to be its top and bottom of the league. But as the year goes on and we add more diets in, it will start to start to become a little bit more meaningful as to which diets I think are the best. So ranking wise, results, I think we have to give it five out of five for results. I've just spent a month losing 18 pounds. I can't imagine there's a better result than that for me. Could I have lost 19, 20, 21 pounds? Probably could have done if I hadn't have had the Frankie and Benny's and the pizza and the other stuff. I don't think even if I refuse to eat any kind of junk food, which isn't part of the plan, so that would have been pointless and stupid to try anyway. But if I had have gone down that route, I still don't think I'd have lost any more weight because I think I'd have ended up cheating and I would have ate the food anyway. So £18 lost, that is five out of five as far as results go. Cost, it, it is obviously more expensive than just eat less food, fatty. So there, it's not going to get top score for cost. $13.99 a month, I think, is reasonable. But it's also, I mean, over the course of the year, that's, what, nearly £200 a year just to track food. Now, I guess you could do it without the app. You could go to meetings, which I think meetings cost even more than using the app. Um, or you could just learn the rules and then try and follow it yourself. But that's then going to really start to affect the ease of use score because... I think it's the app that makes this so easy to do. The fact that fit points work out automatically and link into my Apple Watch or um, Anna's doing it, they link into her Fitbit and it's it's all very, very user friendly. So I think it's worth paying the money, but it is, it's not cheap. And obviously buying the cookbook is another 20 pounds. It's an expensive cookbook, which you can only buy directly from them because these ones aren't on Amazon yet. I guess they'll get there eventually, but it's a little bit of a money grab, isn't it? In Jan Oh, look, in January, the only place you can buy them is the place where they're most expensive. And, of course, the, the extra money on ingredients. And I mean, I've got a bottle of elderflower cordial, which was an ingredient for one meal. I had a teaspoon of that in some salad dressing. I haven't used it since, and I'll almost certainly throw it away because it smells disgusting, and I don't want elderflower cordial. So just some of the recipes are a little bit silly like that. But... I think I think three out of five on cost seems fair. It wasn't free, but at the same time, it wasn't 40, 50, 60, 70 pounds a month like some of these meal planning things or um, the milkshake solution things are. So I think somewhere in the middle seems about right. So three out of five for cost. And I think I probably have to, for ease of use, I'd struggle to not give it a five for that as well because... There, were, there weren't any points throughout the month where I felt like I was hungry and had to stay hungry. There were obviously times when I got hungry, but the great thing was whenever I got hungry, I could eat. And if I was craving a particular type of food, I could eat it. And it just maybe affected what I could eat later in the week, or I might have saved up some points to use it earlier in the week. So in terms of ease of actually following the plan, like I said, in it, it was the easiest month of dieting I've ever done. And I've tried everything over the years. And add into that as well, the fact it does have the app, which is fantastic. I've got to give it a five out of five for, for ease as well. So we've got an opening score of 13 out of 15 for Weight Watchers. That is going to take some beating over the course of the year, but I genuinely am that positive about it. And I think at the end of this year, if I'm still overweight, which there's a good chance I probably will be, because I've still got like over £100 to lose and it isn't going to come off at £18 a month every month, I'm sure, then I think I'll probably just use Weight Watchers unless I find something better throughout the year, which I guess is the point of what we're doing. So £18 lost, can't recommend it highly enough. If you've never tried it, give it a try. It's not a sponsored video before anyone asks. I paid for all this stuff myself and if it was rubbish, I'd have told you so. And I'm sure there'll be some diets I do this year that are rubbish and I will tell you they're rubbish. I'm not going to have any of these videos sponsored or at least sponsored by the company that they're about. Anyway, you know, if... If Bic want to sponsor me to hold a biro through one of these videos, I'm not going to say no to that. 
But we're, we're on a tangent now, so we're going to wrap things up. Let me know down in the comments if you've been doing Weight Watchers or if you've done it in the past, how you found it. Um, what would your score be? If you've used it, what would you give it in each of the three categories of um, results, price, and ease to follow? Um, and let's we could perhaps do a separate league table of user scores. I might find a way to make that work. But for me, absolute roaring success. And sort of this time next month, you're going to come back and see how I got on with Slimming World. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for more of this stuff, plus the weekly vlog, plus other challenges and things here and there too. And thank you very much for watching.